ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಅಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಯೋಗೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ಸ ಚ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತಂ ಪ್ರವರಂ ಮುನೀನ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರ್ ಆಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಪ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟುಡೇ ದಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಎಸ್ ಯಶಸ್ವಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ವಾಗದೀಶ್ವರಿ ಕಲಾ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಮಿ ಅನ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಯೋಗ this is going to take about many episodes but however during the entire course of episodes we are going to more of an interactive mode than a discourse mode the interaction may be by suggesting by making comments and writing anything about these episodes to my email id which will flash at the later point of time and all our free to make any comments and suggestions let us make it a healthy comprehensive approach so today i would like to give a glimpse of the topics which we will be covering in entire episodes starting with introduction to yoga the history of yoga and that is what i am going to cover today followed by i think most importantly why yoga is relevant for today's generation and this is going to be extremely important so what my main theme is going to be in the forthcoming episodes are relating panchakoshas that is five sheets of existence with ashtanga so later on we will discuss this with a practical demonstration through asanas pranayama and meditation also i would like to cover some portion of the mudra and finally a therapy aspect of yoga for critical illness and this is what my episodes are going to cover but however today i will start my first episode with a glimpse on yoga what is yoga and how the yoga has evolved from the ancient time to the modern time so basically i would like to start with yoga with a definition which has come from the root yuj yuj is nothing but the union the union of anything is coming and attributing to the root of the word yoga that is yuj for practical purposes i am taking about three types of union the fundamental union what every human being has to have is the body and the mind this is the first level of union where everyone would like to have to perfectly balance himself holistically and comprehensively second aspect of union is that once we start maturing with the union of our body and mind we should start uniting with the gathering the surroundings the environment and the atmosphere and this kind of union with the environment and surroundings becomes extremely important and which will take towards the higher step the ultimate step everyone loves to have is to have a merger with individual consciousness with the universal consciousness and that is completely a spiritual aspect and this is what the yoga pertaining to but in my episodes i would rather confine myself to the union of body and mind so this glimpse of yoga let us move further it's always interesting when and how yoga has started 
which we call in our language history of yoga. The ancient yoga dates back at least 5000 years ago. At least this is what we have in written scriptures. Maybe in other terminologies it may be lakhs of years but however the scriptural part of yoga and its existence which has come about 5000 years ago that is what we call it as Vedic period this is the first time where the yoga has been very predominantly expressed in Vedas that's why it is called as Vedic period the Ruk, Ejur, Sama and Atharvana where we prize the Lord in Rug Veda, in Eju Veda it is more of sacrifice and Atharvana is nothing but the fire priest or the sacred text which we practice and lastly the Sama is also the hymns pertaining to the music. But however everyone in this period had a perspective of union which is towards individual consciousness with the cosmic consciousness. Then the later on, maybe about 1500 years BC, the pre-classical era started where it was more attributed towards Brahmanas and Aranyagas and this I don't deal more. It is also a kind of Vedic hymns which started practicing yoga and especially the Aranyakas where it was called as a forest hermitage. And that is where the people, I would rather call it as saints and rishis, used to perform their part of yoga in terms of uniting with the Supreme Lord. Bhagavad Gita, some people put it as pre-classical and some people put it in classical. I would rather take it in classical. The classical period of yoga started somewhere around the second century BC, where the essence of Bhagavad Gita was culminated very well and rather practiced and preached by many of the scholars, saints and many other people. However, we remember classical always with a great name called Patanjali, the sage Patanjali because he has been known as father of yoga and Sage Patanjali has given 196 sutras divided into four padas Samadhi Pada, Sadhana Pada, Vibhuti Pada and Kaivalya Pada. But in my discourse and episodes, I would rather talk more about Sadhana Pada which is mainly explained about Ashtanga Yoga and this is where I am going to give a lot of stress which is linking to Panchakoshas. The Patanjali Yoga Darshana is more towards Raja Yoga. To understand it better, let me at least introduce you to the four streams of Yoga that is Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga and Raja Yoga. As Jnana suggests it is path of knowledge, Bhakti suggests path of devotion and Karma suggests path of action and finally Raja Yoga is a path of introspection and also Raja Yoga determines the quality of the mind or the mind control. And the later part even the Hatha Yoga started. Hatha Yoga is more towards path of balancing physical, mental and pranic layers. The next aspect is the post-classical. The post-classical we attribute to the great Acharyas, Shankara, Madhva and Ramanuja which was more towards the Jnana path and then Dasa Parampara and also Hatha Yoga was more popular in post-classical period. However, the modern period of yoga started from somewhere around 1780. Here I would mainly attribute very popular signs. The names are Swami Vivekananda, again his course is Raja Yoga, Ramana Maharshi, 
Yogananda attributing to Kriya Yoga, Sivananda and later on in the last century and this century we have B.K. Sengar and many other Yogacharyas have come and at this moment of time we have Ramadev as one of the leading Yogacharyas and also followed by many other people. See the aspect of yoga today, how it has evolved is, I would rather talk about the significance today that yoga has predominantly known in the entire globe today as one of the most uh, therapeutic aspects which is going to have the curing abilities in the modern terms. So I would also explain this in my next episodes. How this yoga has created and attributed a value towards curing diseases as well as maintaining fitness and also i would like to give some major differences between the normal exercises and how yoga is going to attribute so that is where we are going to learn more more in next forthcoming episodes the significance of yoga today, it has touched even the government and in this remembrance, we conduct the International Yoga Day Festival on 21st June, which has been practiced in the entire globe. I think more than two to three crores of people do this yoga on that day. And uh, this has also been a predominant aspect of the government and Ministry of India that is Ayush where yoga is a part of therapy and it has a huge value for curing people in various ailments and also to maintain the proper fitness and uh, people might be so far listening thinking that yoga is only attributed for people who have certain amount of diseases it is not true it is applicable for the whole mass even today the sports people are undergoing the autogenic training introspection self healing processes and many many other aspects i think yoga has given a large mileage towards attributing towards individual balance now i would like to talk one point which is rather very important which I elaborate in the forthcoming episodes. As compared to the ancient times, today in the modern time, the most critical aspect, the human advancement is the technological advancement. I would like you to give a little bit of stress on this point that we are in the helm of great comfort and convenience. For a moment, let us question whether we have the same competency of inner well-being. This is a question. Please introspect. I would like to take layer by layer into this inner well-being and let us discuss more about this in the forthcoming videos. And with this I conclude. I would like to say thanks for all the listeners for this valuable time what you are giving and uh, kindly introspect about whether yoga a way towards inner well-being. Let us discuss. Thank you all. I would like to conclude with a prayer. Sarve bhavantu sukinaha Sarve santu niramayaha Sarve bhatrani pasyantu Makaschit dukkha bhag bhavet Om Shanti 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 Sarve Janaha Sukhino Bhavantu